You're listening to the Faith Breathed Hope podcast, episode number 33. Today, I speak with a writer and speaker who brings stories to life through their engaging drama ministry that encourages all to embrace their God-given value. She balances the roles of wife, mom, counselor, and teacher, and that gives her a unique perspective. But her favorite role is Nana. Please welcome Peg Arnold. Today, we are going to speak on praying the scriptures with prompts. Welcome to the Faith Breathed Hope podcast, where we gain inspiration and motivation from others who share their touching stories of renewing hope and discovering purpose in any circumstance. I'm your host, Christina Reisinger, and today we will be encouraged by another tremendously inspirational topic that will embolden you to release fear, begin taking small steps forward, and move into your God-given purpose to live and serve in this life. Join me for today's story. Hi, Peg, and welcome to Faith Breathed Hope. How are you today? I am so good, Christina. It's really a wonderful time to be here with you tonight. I am. I'm really excited that you're here. And uh, the first thing I want to have you do is just tell our audience uh, who you are, anything interesting you want to add so that they can get to know you uh, in the beginning. (laughs) Okay. Um, Well, I grew up in Michigan. I raised my family in Maryland. And now I am out in Colorado where both of my kids ended up with their families. So we left a complete life in Maryland, picked up everything, sold almost everything and moved to Colorado to be near our kids and their families. That was a huge thing right there. But uh, if the, if you want to know something interesting about me, when I make cookies, I probably eat more dough than the baked cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's fun and interesting. That's cool. So I, you know, I've always wanted to visit Colorado on a, on a, just a side note. I hear it's uh, very beautiful and interesting. So, um, today we are here, uh, to speak about, uh, praying, uh, the scripture with prompts. So I, I find this a very interesting and fascinating topic to get into. Um, and I'm, so I'm really, really excited about this. Do you want to share anything about, um, you, you are an author, right? And, um, you are a Christian, obviously. Is there anything that the audience should know about your journey to get to where you are before we get, uh, started on the uh, topic itself? Actually, thank you for letting me share that. I I would like to share something. You know, we go through journeys in our faith. Everyone does. And everyone has a story of their journey. And my journey involves, I became a Christian at a very young age. Um, I I say young age. I was a teenager when I gave my heart to to Christ. But when when I gave my heart to Christ, It wasn't that I became this committed follower right away, because when I went away to college, I strayed Mm -hmm. and I learned very well to balance the facade of being the good Christian girl and yet be challenged by living a life that was completely opposite that. Mm -hmm. And I never felt good in that skin. Uh, And I did that for quite a while. And I met my husband and my husband was a Christian. Uh, And so marrying a Christian, I really wanted to integrate my life and be real, not just myself, but I wanted to be real in all situations. I didn't want somebody to know me in one situation and then be embarrassed Mm -hmm. to meet them in another situation, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And I think we all kind of play with that. I think today the imposter syndrome is kind of a term that people live feeling like they were living the life of an imposter. And so integrating my life to have it a, a life of faith with my family, with my friends, and to have that integrity woven through my life was something I really worked through. Mm -hmm. Um, I went through an eating disorder, 
because of perfection and concern about appearance. Uh, I went through infertility, an ectopic pregnancy where I lost a child. My husband, later on in our life, we went through unemployment where uh, he didn't have a job and we were able to keep our house through it, but it was we were very concerned whether we would even be able to do that. And so I have a heart towards people, uh, especially now that are dealing with financial issues. Uh, I can see God's hand through every single one of those experiences. It, when I'm going through it, I don't see God's hand. And now I'm better at seeing God's hand in the tragedy. But when I look back, it is so clear how he was walking with me every single step of the way, protecting me and giving me the resources I needed for that time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I say that the time of unemployment and not knowing where money was going to come from was a way of having me really deal with financial priorities and how to spend my money wisely and how God wanted me to spend my money. Uh, I was working part-time. Uh, my career was a teacher and a school counselor, my master's in counseling. So I worked in counseling for 20 years, and I worked through with a lot of crisis counseling and grief counseling in those situations. I also, um, I also have different experiences within church leadership and leading women's groups and retreats. And so while I was working full time as a counselor, God was kind of opening a door for me to be more involved in women's ministry as a speaker, as a dramatist. And it was through just working with a retreat with my own church that other women saw me leading it and speaking and God opened the door and started having me speak at other churches. So simultaneously with a full-time job, he was opening the door to a speaking ministry. And I wondered how that was going to you know, work all together because I was balancing family, <laughs> balancing work, balancing the ministry. Uh, but it just was ways for him to stretch me and then prepare me for when I was no longer working as a full-time counselor, prepare me to go to other churches with retreats or coffees or prayer breakfasts. And one of the interesting things about that ministry is it's a drama-based ministry. So I, I do Mary and Martha in costume or the woman at the well or modern ladies to help with my message. So all of this was brand new to me as I started going down this road, thinking I was just going to you know, be a counselor the rest of my life. And as I got more into the ministry and we were going to move to Colorado, I left the counseling job and I started writing more because I had a little more time on my hand. I started writing a blog called Devotions for the Distracted Heart. And when I got out to Colorado, I had an accident that put me in a wheelchair and here, and it, I was water skiing. <laughs> so I came out to Colorado to have fun, you know, kind of <laughs> I was water skiing and ended up having an accident, having surgery. And as I said, I was in a wheelchair for eight weeks and then I, really couldn't gain any walking for about three months. And it was really working to learn how to walk again mm -hmm. and then have stamina with that walking. The interesting thing was my devotion the day before I had that accident was be still and know that I am God. And you know how when you do your devotions, you kind of, oh, be still. I'm glad I'm taking this time this morning to be still with you, Lord. <laughs> oh, no, that wasn't his idea with that one. <laughs> it was be still and know that I am God. And I wasn't taking the time to be still, I think. Right. And so he kind of forced me into uh, the time to be still. 
And that allowed me to get more into my writing. And there's other things he brought people into my lives that um, allowed me to then publish my first book, book self-publish. So there were a lot of things, as I said, you know, when you're going through losses and I've lost all my, I've lost both my parents and each of those has a story of loss. Um, and my father-in-law died very suddenly when he was young. So that, that was a hard time. Each of these things that we go through, we go through growth mm -hmm. in our faith if we allow God to help us grow in our faith. Mm -hmm. If we walk away from a hard loss mm -hmm. or a hard season and we are bitter, it's almost like we put up a brick wall and we don't let God through for us to see, first of all, what he wants to do is love us through it. And then what he wants to show us, and it might be hope, it might be learning something new about ourselves, it might be strengthening, I believe spiritual muscles are just like our physical muscles, that he uses some of these to strengthen us, like you're training for a marathon. And uh, so, so that kind of gives you a little bit of story of where I am now. And this whole praying with prompts is I wanted to learn how to pray. You know, there's that verse to pray without ceasing. And well, how do you do that? And first Thessalonians, you know, be thankful always and pray without ceasing. And it's like, okay, what, how do you pray without ceasing? And it was learning how do I integrate the awareness of God into my day even when I feel like I am getting on a treadmill from the time I wake up until the time I go to sleep, what are some prompts and some things that I can make myself aware of? Mm -hmm. So I can be saying prayers. I can be praying the scriptures. I can be, um, be more aware of God's presence in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I think that personally for me as well, learning to just stay in the scripture, knowing that, you know, we have things that come into our lives, whether it's a big loss or it's just the everyday annoyances of whatever's going on, things that um, <clears throat> come into our lives that were not expected or are aggravating or um, kind of give us that poke that makes us be less than the best person that we can be, you know, the enemy coming in, trying to just sneak in any crack that he finds to get us to stay uh, away from the Lord and um, really being cognizant of staying in those scriptures. Uh, I find at least it's important, you know, when you are able to do that, you have more of um, maybe even a, it's a soul at rest kind of thing. I like to think about um, Paul when he often, or he would, he would say, you know what, I have been through so much. I've been through, you know, I've had a lot and I've had a little and I've learned to be okay. And, you know, all yeah. of it. and, and for me personally, that is what I strive to be. <laughs> you know, sometimes you fall way far from the mark. And so for the audience right now, um, who says, you know, I, I'm trying, I am trying, but life just keeps coming at me. Every time I feel like I stand up, uh, something else knocks me down. And, and I'll tell you right now, personally, I can identify with a lot of what you said. Um, and it, it sometimes even seems like the little things, you know, it doesn't even have to be this, this big occurrence. Maybe you had a big occurrence, but it's just like time after time after time, something comes and you get up and it hits you and you get up and it hits you. And, you know, we're called to persevere, um, but you can get weary. So can we kind of go down that path a little bit, you know, when, when we see um, things that are constantly coming, maybe we have the attitude of, oh my goodness, God, what is next? How am I possibly going to get through this. I mean, we got through this one thing and like you said, God was always there, but you didn't see him there, you know, in the, right. in the middle of the storm, but sometimes storms come, even if they're small storms time after time, after time, you know, can we talk about that just a little bit? Yeah, I think that's really important. The, um, the one thing when I am hit with one thing, one right after another, 
and praying the scriptures is, um, is one thing that helps me when I, when you're hit with one thing right at another, you're going, why God? And you don't even have the words to pray Mm -hmm. because you're so frustrated and overwhelmed with everything. And you're feeling like it's all you can do to get up and go through the motions of the day. And you really don't have the, have the words to pray for yourself. And in that moment, I do encourage, if you know somebody like that, that's why intercessory prayer is important. That's why we stand in the gap with each other, you know, but for ourselves, one of the things that someone told me is turn to the Psalms. And I said, turn to the Psalms. I said, what do you mean turn to the Psalms? Because in the Psalms, there are many times that David is at the end of his rope, that David you know, made so many mistakes. And when you read here, he is the man with a heart for God who, you know, who killed people intentionally, who, you know, committed adultery. David did not have a clean life where he made all the right decisions. And I think there are some times that we feel like we have made the worst decision. We've ruined our life. You know, we've ruined our kids' lives and it's never going to, you know, we're never going to come out of it. And that's why I think going to the Psalms and praying the Psalms is a really, is, is one way that God can reveal himself. It's also a way that we can put words to something that we might be dealing with. Mm-hmm. And I, I want to try it uh, just uh, for an example of it. If you go to Psalm 59, And David is saying, rescue me from my enemies, O God. Protect me from those who have come to destroy me. Mm -hmm. And rescue me from these criminals and save me from these murderers. They've set an ambush for me. Well, we might not have criminals and murderers after us. But we might feel like we have the enemy of financial issues. We might feel like the enemy has gotten into the soul of our child and our child is making decisions that are grieving our heart. Mm -hmm. And so for instance, you could say, Oh God, instead of rescue me from my enemies, rescue my son from the enemies that are facing his soul right now, protect him from those that come to destroy him. That he's making decisions that I don't have control over rescue him from the people that want to make his life the worst. You know, there are ways we can take this psalm and we can pray it through the whole thing. But if you go further into that psalm, you know, it'll go and it'll go through a lot of different things. But if you go further, it goes, you are my strength, Lord. And I wait for you. I wait for you to rescue me or rescue my son. Oh God, you are my fortress. You are like my protector. And in your unfailing love, you will stand with me or you will stand with my daughter or you will stand with my husband, my sister, my parent, whatever it is. So I, there are so many songs that start with this lament of trouble mm-hmm. and then Every single psalm ends up with, but Lord, I do see you there. Even when I don't feel you, I see you there. So my, my encouragement to anyone who is just feeling not heard by God, you know, just wondering, God, are you really there? Mm. It, open up to the psalms and cry your heart out to the Lord, because so many times we are brought up in, you know, many of us are brought in all kinds of churches, but many of us were brought up learning rote prayers, you know, the, the Lord's prayer, God is great. Now I lay me down to sleep. And so we feel when we pray to God that our prayers have to be, well, they've got to follow this order. And then I need to say this, and then I need to say that. And God doesn't have any expectations for us except to bring 
It says a contrite heart, oh God, that's what you desire from me. You don't want me to come and do flower language. And if I am angry, say, God, I'm mad. Where are you? And be able to express, he wants to see our true emotions. Mm-hmm. And that's when I think he reveals to us. It's when we're on the, when we're on the floor of our bathroom crying mm-hmm. and crying out to him that he says, you're not alone and I love you and I'm there with you. I'm, I'm so happy that you um, mentioned that because I, I'm imagining that people come to a space where they say, Hey, I don't even know how to pray. And, um, you know, that's one of the things we try to teach our kids is not that, um, God is great. God is good. I mean, they know that, but just to have a conversation with God, let him know. And I remember when my kids are younger, now they're going through a different stage now where they're kind of getting a little squirrely about not knowing what to say. And I guess that's kind of how the development works. But, you know, when they're very, very young, uh, I remember my daughter just sitting there and just listing things about, oh, God, I did this and thank you for that. And just tell, I mean, it was almost like she took him around her room and was describing everything in the room. And it was so cool because she was just having a conversation with a friend, you know, and as adults, I think that maybe we need to get back to that. And, um, you know, it's, it doesn't matter, um, you know, what we say or how we say it. God knows our hearts. And, uh, I will say, and add this is that, um, our daughter for everybody who, uh, knows me and those who listen to this podcast know that our daughter, uh, youngest daughter, uh, was sick. So she lived 10 and a half months before she passed away. But during the time that I was pregnant, we knew she was sick then. And during the time that um, she was here on earth with us, there was a lot of um, anxiety and, and already uh, grief before her passing. And I, I got this feeling from other, what I thought were other Christians um, that made me, it made me feel like I didn't pray enough. I didn't pray hard enough. I didn't pray the right prayer. And it made me feel really, really bad. Or I guess I allowed it to make me feel bad, you know, and they didn't make me feel bad by any means. But, um, you know, I went certainly through that, that whole space where I felt like I, I didn't say the right thing. If I had said the right thing, then maybe she would have lived, you know, and, and we know that in, in grief, um, all of those thoughts come, you know, (laughs) and and you you find ways to try to blame yourself and that kind of stuff. And we're not necessarily talking to everybody about grief here today, but, you know, I, I'm sure that people are in those situations where they say, okay, I'm not praying right. I'm not praying correctly. God's not listening to me because I'm not saying the right words. And I think you're right. I think it has to do with your heart. And he knows, he, he knows everything about us, you know, before we're even born. And so why would we allow our, <laughs> why would we allow ourselves to be in that space where we said, he doesn't, he's, a, he's not caring about me because I'm not doing it right. He cares. He absolutely cares. So, um, you know, and I, go ahead. Can I say something? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And at that time, Christina, you had to feel like, well, of course we're praying, God, you're going to heal her when she was in your womb. I'm sure you prayed Psalm 139, you know, you've knit her pieces together. Of course, you're going to make her better when she comes out, there's going to be a cure. And because that's what we all have that hope, Mm -hmm. but we all know that unfortunately, you know, we lose, we lose dear, dear people who we love. And I can't imagine, I'm so sorry you went through the loss of a child because, you know, the loss of the child that's just the most unnatural thing in the world. Losing a parent is hard. But that's that's kind of a natural. Losing a sibling is hard, but it's not the same as losing a child. And so I just feel like there might be somebody out there listening that thinks that, well, like you said, maybe I didn't pray the right thing or God could have made a miracle happen. And We don't have control over illness in this world because it's part of original sin. And so there are things that take over our bodies that are bodies of those that we love. 
and we have to say goodbye way too soon. But God's going to unite us, and our life here on earth is so short mm -hmm. compared to the time that we're going to have with that loved one in heaven. Mm -hmm. So I just want to offer hope and comfort to somebody who might be walking that path of grief, and it's okay for the anger, and it's okay for the blame, and it's okay for the bargaining. All of those pieces are natural natural part that we have to go through and it's okay to feel like you're okay like oh but I thought I was okay and to be back at square one too because mm -hmm. there's yeah. no map there's no map to grief definitely and and I think that goes to that piece with pray without ceasing you know and I also say you have to continually uh, surrender because we, we give things to the Lord, but then our anxiety pops up, you know, the enemy comes in and he takes, he's an opportunist and he takes that time to just dig in and, and um, pray on our fears. And, you know, so certainly with, with my particular grief journey, one of the things that I've had to uh, basically say, you know, get thee behind me, Satan, kind of the thing, because, yeah. and, and we do in, in all aspects of our lives, you know, different, different things that pop up and uh, that we go through. But, you know, this, this thing came up all the time with, you know, worrying about my other children, something happening, even though uh, if you were to look at things rationally, it didn't make any sense because they were healthy. But I think that that is part of what the enemy does. He takes you know, our situations. And he says, I'm going to sneak in there and just pry that wedge. And he takes us further and further from the Lord. So um, when yeah. you are not going through adversity, when you were, you know, feel like the, the world is, is great. Uh, can you tell us what the benefits of praying these prompts would be then? Because we often speak of adversity here because that, that is, why I started the podcast in the first place uh, to show people that there is hope. However, um, everybody doesn't go through adversity all the time. And some people have not experienced great tragedy or loss. And so for those people out there, this would certainly work for them as well. Can you speak to that? Some? Absolutely. Uh, before we go to that, I did want to just cover like three verses in praying and fear and worry and anxiety you know there's because when we are worried of course there's math you know do, do not worry about anything you know for the and I always say when you see uh when you see birds because he talks about the birds of the air or he talks about the lilies of the field when you see those it's a reminder that we shouldn't be worried about the things in our life because God is taking care of those. And that, that whole verse ends up with the seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then everything, you know, will mm -hmm. come unto us with that. Uh, the other one is in Philippians, you know, do not be anxious about anything. And it says by prayer and petition, meaning go to God with what you're anxious about, go to God and plead with him, petition, that's pleading. And then, but it says with Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, you know, at our worst time, God's saying we need to go to him in gratitude. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really hard, but he promises in that, and that's a letter from Paul. It's not Jesus talking. It's a letter from Paul, but it says, and the peace that transcends all understandings will be upon your heart. Mm -hmm. And so that's another verse to pray when you're anxious. And then, and of course there are so many, but another one that I think of is do as Isaiah 41, 10, you know, do not fear, do not be afraid for I am your God and I will strengthen you and hold you with my righteous right hand. And I think sometimes if we can think about being held and just with, and just wrap our arms, put one arm on one shoulder and one arm on the other shoulder, close our eyes and, and, and envision ourselves being held by the Lord Mm -hmm. is another way of, and taking that deep breath, you know, even, even Eastern religious talk about a cleansing breath, but I believe that God gave us that breath to be able to breathe in his Holy spirit and mm -hmm. breathe out the anxiety to calm our souls. And sometimes we forget that just breathing 
is a way to settle ourselves down. So I wanted to say that, but then I do want to go through. Yes, there are times we go through good times and praying scripture prompts are are really necessary for those times as well. And so one of the things that I have done is I talked about seeing the birds and seeing the lilies is when we see or do things within our lives to make those times that we're thinking about praying to God, praying for somebody or repeating a scripture that is important to us. For instance, you know, we've all during this COVID time gone through washing our hands and people said, we'll sing happy birthday twice, you know, or something <laughs> like that. But I, I like to think, okay, we're washing our hands and Jesus makes us clean and Jesus gives us living water. How about washing our hands and saying, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Don't cast me from your presence and make your Holy Spirit known unto me. And to say that or sing it, you know, because there are many singing scriptures, um, to sing that when we wash our hands mm -hmm. or when we're taking a, taking a drink of water. We know that we should be drinking water throughout our day. You know, dear Lord, you are the living water. Just as the woman at the well, you offered her living water. She thought she needed water for her body. So as I drink this water, or as I pour this water for my child, or as you know, we prepare our water bottles for the day, may, us, may we just think of you, Lord, that as our waters, are, our thirst is quenched with the water we drink, may our spiritual thirst be quenched by your living water. Or the same when making a sandwich and bringing out the bread, you know, that Jesus, you're the bread of life. And I don't need to hunger for other things, but you will satisfy the deepest desire of my soul. Because I can tell you, when I say the deepest desire of my soul, even if we're going through good times, that is, there's probably things going on in our lives that aren't perfect, and we need to be aware of God's presence and how he wants to be integrated into everything. And so you hear a lot about living a life of gratitude. And that's when I would say, go to the, go to the Psalms and don't pick out the lamenting songs, but pick out, praise you in the sanctuary, praise you in the heavens, you know, blessed is the man who, uh, who, seeks the Lord. He is like a tree who's planted by streams of living water and see yourself as growing stronger and stronger during, during good times. In gratitude, I think it's, if we are going through good times to be aware and thank God and praise him for the resources that he's put into our lives, for what our surroundings are, for all the things that are going right in our lives, and then ask him, how can I be a witness? How can I spread the fruits of your spirit to other people? So when we're talking about being connected to the vine, well, if we're a strong branch connected to the vine, like John 15, then we should be flourishing in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And if you're going through good times and all eight things, nine of those are really great in your life, I want to meet you. <laughs> Because when I go through, where can I pray about, you know, improving myself and making myself better? And I go through those fruits of the spirit. I'm sure there's self-control that I need to be worried about. I'm sure there's patience that I need to present to the Lord. And so there are ways to pray the scriptures asking for his strength in every situation. And even if it's to be able to give you the wisdom and the discernment of when to reach out to someone else who may need you at that time. I always say there are, there are three situations where we, that we go through in our life, in our need of God. And one, and this is after we're aware of God, we're desperate for him. We don't know where else to turn and yet we don't know how to grasp him. We are just seeking him in every single way. 
And that's, and then there's the other one where we're kind of going along and it's okay, but we know we need to take time. And then there are times we are strong in the Lord and we are like that tree planted by living waters, whether it's the Psalms or Jeremiah that you're pulling it out. And when we are strong and things are going for it, then we have a responsibility to reach out to our brothers and our sisters that are going through those difficult times. And so it's praying for God who needs encouragement right now. Can I pray for them? Can I send a note? Can I give them a call? Do I need to take a meal to their house? You know, there are ways that we can be the hands and feet of Christ. I know that um, when my mother was dying and I was trying to figure out whether I should fly to, from Maryland to Michigan to be with her and I was out for a walk and I was just devastated and trying to make the decision and I couldn't think of anything else. You know, when you are in wrapped with whatever the situation is, when it takes over your whole body, I came home and my girlfriend had heard and she said, I don't know what else I can do for you, but here's a pot of soup and you don't have to think about dinner tonight. <laughs> you know, I just cried, you know, because somebody saw my need. They didn't call up and say, what can I do? They just did it and put it on my counter and, and ju just said, here it is. And so I, and I think we can do this when we are going through hard times as well. But you asked about somebody going through, what is the need to pray the scriptures? When we pray the scriptures and are praising God and thanking him and looking for ways that we can grow closer to him, he's going to reveal those who need us at that time. He's going to lay it upon our heart. Another thing I wanted to say too, is when we don't know how to pray and we are only crying, there's, there's a scripture and I can't, it's in the new Testament when it talks about the Holy spirit, hears our groanings mm -hmm. and translates them to the Lord in what we're saying, you know, mm -hmm. so we have, you know, the Holy Spirit to translate for us when we don't know what's going on. Other scriptures, um, I, I think of when I'm out walking and I walk by a green pasture, the Psalm 23 will come to mind, you know, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. That means he makes us pause and take a breath and breathe in. He leads me beside still waters. Um, I think everyone, when they look at water, it's life-giving, whether it's calm water, whether it's the ocean, whether it's a lake with waves, but it's life-giving and life-breathing. And those are the times that we can look and see the hand and thank him for that. Thank God for that creation. Another way in praying the scriptures, you know, on a constant way is, um, this, somebody told me this when I was a young mom, you know, doing mundane tasks like laundry, <laughs> you know, and saying, oh Lord, you know, laundry is something that just never gets done. You know, I mean, we're right. doing it all right, the time. Right, right. <laughs> so in folding the clothes, praying for the people that you're folding the clothes for praying for who's wearing them or where it might take them or how God might reveal himself to our children, to our spouses, uh, if we have others living in our house. And then when we have that lone sock or those lone socks that never find their mates and they end up in that pile, to know that even God left the 99 to search for that lost sheep mm -hmm. And if you're feeling like that lost sheep, as a mom who's just going through the motions and feeling like life is never the same, or the life is the same every day, and, you know, did you have a better purpose for me? There's no better purpose than being a mom, I can tell you that. But feeling as if there is, you know, that she's not doing the right thing, looking at that lone sock and knowing that the Lord left the 99 to find that sheep. And that he sees you when you're feeling 
like you're not making the right decisions or you have lost your patience with that two-year-old again because mm. it's just <laughs> real feeling with a two-year-old and just that God sees you, he hears you, he dries your tears and he wants you to know that he loves you and that you're doing a good job, mama. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. And I, I, I can see how praying uh, the scriptures uh, can prepare you for battle. Like if you're not in that, that space of uh, adversity or in the middle of that storm at the time, by implementing these into your daily routines and your daily life and having them in your mind and in your heart, um, you know, whatever we, we put in is going to be what's going to come out. So once we have those storms and that adversity, you'd be more likely to have that come out than something different, <laughs> I would assume. Um, so do you have any, uh, well, advice, encouragement, encouragement is always the better word, I believe, encouragement for um, the listener out there who, you know, is new to all of this, you know, and they say, well, I mean, do you just do it? What, <laughs> you know, is there, you said to start with Psalms, is there anything else that you would do uh, or say to encourage them to, to continue to look at these things and implement them in their daily routine life? Is, do you even say the word routine? <laughs> yeah, really. Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> well, I think, I think to find a time and if you are new to all of this, that to uh, you know get a get a translation of the Bible that you you could read. There's the messages out there. Start with the New Testament. Mm-hmm. I would I encourage that. Or start with a devotional. Maybe you're not ready just to read the Bible, but starting with if you're a mom or whatever. There, if you're single, if you are a professional, there are devotionals out there for almost every single walk in life. And when you start with a devotional, there's always a scripture and then a little story to go with that devotional. And if you if that devotion means something or that scripture means something to you, start writing it down. And if you're not a writer, you jot it on your phone on a voice message or something like that, that helps to put it in your brain again. Because as we lay scripture on our heart, as you said, it builds us up for those hard times. And those scriptures come back to us. Uh, when we have um, when we have adversity hit and the enemy hits us, or if you're going through something, at, maybe ask a friend. Do you have scripture that helped you through this period in life? I know when my my husband didn't have a job, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. You know, mm-hmm. for I have plans for you, plans to prosper, not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future. And that just meant the world that meant that, wow, there's hope beyond this. You know, I, I don't see the hope yet. I don't see what the purpose of this is yet, but God has promised me and saying me, he has plans for me. And then the next says, and if you pray to me with your whole heart, Mm -hmm. I will hear and I will listen to you. And it means if we come to him with our whole heart, I think of Valentine's Day. There are so many heart verses that we can say around Valentine's Day that have nothing to do with romantic love, but our love for God. Mm -hmm. And there's also when we were moving to Colorado, I thought this was the most unexpected it was the most unexpected move that I'd ever made in my life and I literally felt like I was jumping off a cliff so Joshua 1 9 became be strong and courageous do not fear for the Lord is with you wherever you go and that just became uh became a word to me so what I would encourage someone to do that's maybe just starting this find one of those verses that really you speak to a trusted christian friend and maybe work on on memorizing it put it and when we memorize verses i have a hard time you know i have to put it on a you know i i put it on a a voice memo so i can listen to it in the car i put it on a 
three by five card and try to see it on my mirror. So I'm looking at it. I have to use mnemonics. I memorized uh, Philippians 4, 8, where it says, think on these things whatsoever is pure and praiseworthy and lovely and admirable, noble, mm -hmm. true, trust, excellent, and right. Think on these things. And I, and I thought, how am I going to remember those things? Well, I just, I just rattled them off for you. They're not necessarily in order, but they make the acronym planters. So I, I learned planter <laughs> and then I learned how to put them all okay. together. <laughs> there are different ways. And if we have things like, um, you know, the do not worry, think of the birds of the, of the air and the lilies of the field. If we can think of pot of, tangible things that would remind us of that verse mm -hmm. and and but it has to be a verse that means something to us if I were to go in and choose you know some verse that didn't mean anything to me it would be hard to kind of integrate it into my life at that time I so. love I'm sorry. I love the way that you talk about possibly recording it, you know, and, and doing the movement with it when we, I, and, and I can be wrong, but I think that when we uh, couple the movement with the memorization or the, the speaking out, you know, speaking out loud, you know, I'm a very uh, big advocate of actually writing, not just typing, because I feel like there's something that happens between our hands and our brains that, helps us uh, learn better. And the same thing with the movement, you know, you commit it to that muscle memory and so that it's able to pop up again. Um, so I don't know all the science behind, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing, but I def definitely recognize that. And then to be able to take, um, you know, on the recording, uh, the verse and have it repeated to you and have you remember it. And it's, almost like this, this affirmation of God's promises. So, you know, you hear a lot of people talking about saying affirmations, why not say affirmation of his promises of scripture, you know, right. to help get you through that. Like you said, um, I know the plans that you have for me, you know, so anybody who feels like they're not worthy or they're not enough, they can say, you know what, you made me, you knitted me in my mother's womb and you have plans for me in this life. And one of yeah. my favorite is um, I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That is the verse I tell everybody, um, you know, it is the verse that got me through uh, my daughter's sickness and, and her, her passing. And uh, even now um, I, I find me personally um, and that that is such a strong promise to know that the Lord wants us to have joy. He didn't just stick us here to go through things. You know, um, you might have a, a tendency to start thinking, okay, well, it's am I a puppet on a string. I'm going through this and, you know, God doesn't care about me, but to know, to know that I know that I know that he wants me to experience joy in this life, because it says in the land of the living, it doesn't say in yeah. heaven, you know, we know right. heaven is perfect. But here on earth, he wants us to enjoy this life. And the Bible says, and I don't know exactly where all the scripture is, but, you know, uh, it has said several places that he wants us to, to enjoy this life. Um, and he will bless you exceedingly and abundantly. That's in Ephesians, you mm -hmm. know, that he's going to bless you exceedingly and abundantly. So. Definitely. Definitely. And, and you mentioned earlier, too, about the gratitude. And that is something that um, I've been talking about in my uh, group for the Kingdom Women's uh, Summit that's coming up in April. And, and actually, the whole year that we're doing stuff is um, there was one of our, our speakers who talked about gratitude and, and um, how important it is to praise the Lord and stay in praise of the Lord. And the way that she referenced it was that this praise in this, this gratitude and this Thanksgiving was really for us. You know, initially, if you think about it, he's like, oh, well, you know, he just wants us to, to bow down to him and praise him and stuff like that. But when we are in a space of praise and worship, when we are in that place of being grateful and thankful, um, it does something to our souls. It does something to our hearts. And it, it allows us to have that peace that surpasses all human understanding. Um, you know, and, and I have had people that say, you know, 
I, I was going through this awful thing and I just, I sat there and I praised and, you know, originally it was, it was hard for me to even fathom that, you know, it's like, how in the world do you thank God when you're going through this horrific situation? But now um, I'm able to see that it is about the fact that, that I can have that peace that he gives. So I thought that was a pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I think it is. And it, and it actually is psychological, you know, Mayo Clinic talks about the power of positive thinking and Mayo Clinic has done studies on people that have had illnesses and those that have had positive thinking. It's not necessarily, you know, belief in God, but that's what God gratitude to God is. It's that positive thinking Mm -hmm. and God has created our bodies and science supports this, that has, he's created our bodies that if we can change negative thoughts and replace them with positive thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's like if we pour out that negativity, so we open up our soul so God can fill it with his hope and his comfort, then um, that's, that's how he's created us. Mm -hmm. And so the, the whole thing about that gratitude, it does change our attitude towards the people around us or towards the situation. And it makes us stronger. When we are anxious and stressed, we're much weaker. And we know that we're not healthy. We're healthier when we live lives of gratitude and lives of affirmation. Definitely. And and the whole, uh, the big thing about mindset, everybody wants to talk about mindset. Every coach I've ever met uh, (laughs) has integrated that into their coaching. and I think that the best uh, space for mindset would be getting to it's scripture. So yes, um, and worship and praise for sure. Um, all right, Peg, can you tell our audience where they can find you? Absolutely. I am on Instagram as Peg Arnold. I'm on Facebook, Peg Arnold and the Wonder of Women. I, and I do live videos once a week. So if you wanted to get on there, I have a website, pegarnold.org. I'd love to bless a listener, anyone who goes on there with a free devotional. I also am on YouVersion, Devotions for the Distracted Heart. YouVersion is an, a Bible app that you can have the Bible read to you verbally. You can read devotions. You can read the Bible. It's got a lot of resources on it. But one of the devotional plans is Devotions for the Distracted Heart. And so I invite people to try that. And then I have a book called Devotions for the Distracted Heart. It's available on my website. If you get it on my website, then I can send you a free journal and sign it. And I, I'd love to do that. Uh, if you get it on Amazon, you get it without shipping and you can you know, get it there as well. But I can't send you the free journal with Amazon. Um, then I'm also in a couple chicken soup for the soul books. Uh, one, uh, the survival guide for uh, mothers. And that's one of the books I'm in and whispers of hope. And then uh, there's uh, joy at any age, I think it's called. So uh, there's several places that you can find me in another book called reigniting hope as well. Those are all on Amazon, but I would love to connect with somebody on my website, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, you know, all of those. And in addition to all of uh, the places that she just mentioned, you can also catch Peg at the Kingdom Women Summit Bearing Fruit coming up in April. Thank you so much for being here on Faith Breathed Hope, Peg. Really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. And for all of you out there, continue to be blessed and bless others. And we'll talk to you next time. Welcome to the Faith Breathed Hope podcast, where we gain inspiration and motivation from others who share their touching stories of renewing hope and discovering purpose in any circumstance. I'm your host, Christina Reisinger, and today we will be encouraged by another tremendously inspirational topic that will embolden you to release fear, begin taking small steps forward, and move into your God-given purpose to live and serve in this life. Join me for today's story.